Hi everyone, this is Kyle with KDebate. I wanted to do another video on how to give proper criticism. Uh, and I do apologize for the background. Uh, I can't get it any darker than that without putting up like a mattress or something. Um, so criticism. I, it's been in the news that people have just been attacking everybody all the time because that's just how politics go. And it's not proper criticism. It, it's, it's insults. It's mudslinging. It's misinformation. It's lying sometimes, just outright, without any coherent reason for it besides to make somebody else look bad or yourself look good. Criticism doesn't have to be destructive. It, it's not meant to be. Criticism is meant to be a way of fixing something that's wrong. It's like you have uh, some kind of issue with your work and somebody gives criticism to make it better. Like you have um, critics, food critics. It's like, okay, your food's too salty or your food isn't cooked properly. And it's, it's gotten to the point where we find entertainment in people being insulted instead of being properly critiqued. Now, you can critique somebody in a way that can be seen as destructive, but it's actually, you know, just, just kind of, you know, uh, th there's a lot of different ways of giving criticism. And there's like brutal criticism, which is like, you know what, you're tone deaf, you'll never sing, and like Simon Cowell kind of stuff. And just insult, insult, insult. But honestly, some of that can be very true and necessary because a lot of people are raised with the mentality that they're special, even though what they're being told they're special about, they cannot do properly. So they never actually apply themselves to it. They just think they're spectacular at it. I have several friends who have admitted that because they were told when they were very young throughout their entire life that they were the best, they were very smart, they were so great at everything, that they never learned how to actually study or apply themselves for things. And now as they get older, they realize that they don't have the skills necessary and it's, it hinders them now. They have to work much, much harder to catch up for what they lost and what their, their improper teaching pretty much. Criticism can be good. It can be very helpful for people that just, like, if I draw something or I make a video and I show it to somebody, it's like, can you tell me what I'm doing wrong? It's hard for me to accept criticism when it's not fair. Like, it's like, oh, you're, I had one person, is actually the person that I've, one of the first people I started trying to work with in my videos. Uh, we even set up a whole bunch of stuff and then they just stopped doing things. So it caused a lot of problems. But, one of the things they told me was that I wasn't in your face enough. I wasn't con conflicting. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, uh, like, what did they say? I, I rambled on too much, which I understand. I, I see that as well. But one of the things they said was the topics I chose were not controversial enough because they wanted success. They wanted money. That's all they wanted. And it was a red flag from the beginning. And when they, they were pumping in money into the project, buying things and putting things together. But when it came to actually working on it, they wouldn't do anything. So they were, they were all about money all, and they didn't care about the, they didn't care about the quality of anything. So they, they cheaped out on everything. And it was really problematic. Uh, it's one of the reasons why everything fell through because you can't work with cheap materials. They kept breaking and then you had to buy more. And he's like, eh. So, and I was trying to help as well, but it just did not work. But his criticisms were based off of his own idea of what I should want. And I disagreed with that. But at the same time, there's criticisms that are just wrong. Because if I wanted nothing but money, his way was probably a very easy way of getting it. It's a cash grab. But it, it didn't have longevity. It didn't have any kind of... It, it wouldn't work in the long run. Because once you get the money, it's done. There's no nothing else. Everything's broken. You can't continue with anything. And... It's, it's a very, very, it's like, it's like somebody making a Kickstarter and then just grabbing the money and running away. It's pretty much what they wanted to do. But they wanted to start a big thing and then grab as much money from it as can and then leave. But uh, I'm rambling too much about that. Uh, some people would be very interested in that. I was not and it, it didn't work out. But criticism in itself, because I'm criticizing them now. Um, when, when you believe that the other person wants exactly what you want, your criticism is going to be skewed. It's going to be, it's going to be wrong. I mean, you, it could still be helpful. There are people that want very different things but need the skills from both sides. I, I need to learn how to speak clearly. I need to learn how to get 
a background that's not horrendous. And I, I think this is a pretty nice background. And I, it's, it's easy for me to set up. I don't have to do a lot of things. Um, <clears throat> though this, this window doesn't really, I mean, it gives off too much light even when it's closed. And it's a big, it's a big screen door that goes off into, into this tiny, tiny little, it's, I wouldn't call it, it is a balcony, but it overlooks like the top of the parking garage. Um, like if I were to step off of the balcony, like climb over, I would land directly on top of the covered parking in the parking lot. And it's pointing directly at a building. There's nothing over there to look at. But it is nice to have. I mean, if you wanted to like have a plant or you wanted to do something, it would be okay. Though it does make it easy for people to get into the apartment, so we have to keep it locked um, because people can just climb up on top of it. But so so we keep it locked with the little bar on the side of it and all that stuff. But I can criticize that. I can criticize the fact that they painted our bathtub. Um, they we we said you know the bottom of it was rusting because it, it's a nice apartment complex. But you know some of the things are just kind of cheaped out on. And they they somebody came in and just painted the bathtub. They didn't try to do a good job. They painted over the the drain, and we had to like scrape it out like because it wouldn't drain anymore like we waited the two days they said to wait so it would dry properly and then when we turned it on it wouldn't drain I'm like you covered you covered the drain with paint so that's a criticism it's like you, you did your job but you did it quickly i know you have to because you know your job can't be all about you know spending hours and hours on this one thing when you have a hundred other things to do i understand that but don't paint over the drain that, that's a criticism and they can learn from that kind of criticism. If I were to just say you're stupid, incompetent, but that, that's criticism, but it's not helpful. It's not something good. It's, it's insult. It's attacking the person, not what they're doing. And, <clears throat> and another example is when you say somebody is stupid or somebody is incompetent, uh, you're insulting them as a person. But if you say you are being stupid, these actions you are taking are are from the, the direction of somebody that is not good. Like, you, you can't just say you are an evil person unless they actually are, and that's very hard to quantify. But you can say that, that that's not right. That action, if somebody were to do that, I would consider that an evil action or a bad action, because evil is hard to quantify. Um, I know people that have made mistakes or who, who have, in my last video, who were being really annoying. It's like, that is really annoying. You are being annoying. I'm not saying they are they are inherently annoying, because that's not true, but you're being that. You are, you are at this moment within the realm of what this is. And if they don't want to be that kind of person, then they would make steps or take steps to kind of phase that out. So they can take it not as a personal insult, but as the idea of my behavior reflects who I am, therefore I can fix it. If you just say you're the smartest person ever, or you're the best person ever, or even if you're the worst person ever, it doesn't say they can fix it. It's not so much a critique, it's an insult. And insults, for one thing, are not as likely to help because people are just going to see you as a jerk for insulting them. But it's also, it doesn't give them a direction to take. It doesn't give them, a, their, it doesn't tell them how to fix their behavior. And I know telling somebody to fix their behavior can be very judgmental if you're not looking at it objectively. Um, <clears throat> learn how to drive, you psycho, but really they're, they're driving fine and you're just mad. Um, so you, it's, it, a lot of people do that. They, they insult without really thinking about what they're saying. Um, they don't know the situations you're coming from. And I think that's an important differentiating trait of, you know, you step back and you actually ask, you know, is there something going on that I'm not aware of? And if, if not, if I'm completely aware of the situation, then you need to, you need to think about this. Um, <clears throat> I, I knew a lot of people, or at least I know one person very well and a couple of people that were just like, my dad's a really good driver, but he drives really fast, especially when he's mad. When he's mad, he'll just go like 70 something miles an hour on the road. And it terrifies me. And I wanted, I want to say, you know, that's not safe. And I knew somebody that just got the worst road rage ever and would just scream and swerve all over the road. I was that was that was the most terrifying I've ever been in a, in a vehicle besides when I was in my accident. Um, but it's just, there's criticisms. There, there's ways of, of critiquing these things that help. Like, see a counselor, man. You need a counselor for this. You're completely nuts. 
um, and they really, really were. But <clears throat> there's there is a very prominent in politics, a very prominent idea that you have to insult your opponents, and not everyone does it. Not everyone is guilty of doing it egregiously and unfairly all the time, but they they all take pot shots at each other. They all take uh, these little nitpicky criticisms about things they do or things they've said without giving the context. Or maybe they just don't know the context. But if you don't know the context, you shouldn't be bringing it up in that way. You should be, you know, learning about it first. But uh, sometimes they just don't have time, I guess, even though it's their entire job. So uh, that that's, that's a critique I can give for them. If it's your job, then you should do it well. I mean, you don't have to be the best at it. You should at least put the time in. Um, uh, and one of my criticisms for the for our government is almost everyone that's running for office has a job that they're not doing right now. Uh, they, they have votes to cast, and they're not doing it. They're like 5 10% of the votes that they're supposed to be doing because they're out campaigning. They don't have time to do it anymore though some of them do. So you do have time. You just don't want to put the effort in. So you're not doing your job to try and get a better job, pretty much, technically. President is technically a better job, I guess. But when somebody says something about an idea, like let's, let's say um, you say a person that does this is a bad person. And you guys might know what I'm, what I'm referring to. If a person does this, I believe they're a bad person. If that's all you say, no context needed because that is what you literally believe is like if you shoot somebody to steal their wallet i believe you are a bad person let's just use that as an example and somebody who shot somebody and stole their wallet doesn't believe they're a bad person is like i just needed the money and they wouldn't give it to me so i'm going to attack you for saying that and say you're a whatever defender and you can you can turn it around and try to insult the person that you believe insulted you they weren't talking to you they weren't they might have been talking about you but they're not saying you are a bad person they're saying people that do this are a bad person or i believe they are a bad person and that is a it's a more hands-off kind of critique it, it definitely needs to be done with tact you can't just say that about stuff uh it's like i believe uh, people with children are horrible and you can't just say that stuff but you you can say things like uh, somebody that uh, tries to sneak their kids into an r-rated movie um and you know ruins the movie for everybody and then gets mad at the cinema for not allowing them in or kicking them out in the first place and they start suing people i can say those kind of people are bad because i've I, i've heard of that stuff happening but you know, the whole Deadpool thing. Let my children watch this Deadpool movie. It's like, no, this is a really, really R-rated movie. Don't do not do that. Uh, but you see people not handling critique well, uh, and, and you have people that just explode when critique, even fair critique, or critique not pointed at them is, is done. And sometimes it's a misinformation thing. Sometimes you just think that something was said when it wasn't, or you're just very bad at handling it, so you respond negatively because you just can't handle it. And I think that that in itself should be fixed. Like, hey, if you can't handle this, you need to figure out how to, because you're not being fair. You, you, you say you're not being treated fair, but you're also not treating them fairly. And I believe that that is a very important distinction between what should happen and what actually happens. Now, you can treat somebody unfairly, but they can treat you unfairly as well. It's a two-way street. And if you believe you're being treated unfairly, you can say that. But you should not respond with unfairness in, in your actions. If you believe that everything is against you, that every single thing is trying to destroy you, and it could very well could be, you have to address that. You can't just get unfair back. It makes you less of a person. It makes you as bad as them and gives them a reason to attack you. It, you can be hated, like unfairly hated, the entire world against you. But if you become the kind of person that they say you are, then you have failed. And it's, I'm not saying it's easy. It's the hardest thing in the world to, to accept that people hate you, that accept that you know things aren't going to go your way specifically because somebody's trying to, to destroy you. And you have to fight it, but you can't fight it by becoming a worse person because then you lose. 
and I, I guess it really depends on what you're fighting for. Uh, if you're fighting for money or power or uh, a position or whatever, then I guess you can lose if you don't become a worse person just because the world's against you and you're going to lose. But um, that's not what I fight for. And again, I just said this earlier. It's like you can't just present this as, as the, the fact. It's like, okay, if you're not fighting for that, you're not fighting for that. But if you're not fighting for, you know, being a good person, then I think you have already lost at everything. Because if you're not a good person, what the heck are you? You're a parasite, you're a terrible person, you shouldn't have any power because you're a bad person. It's like there's a whole bunch of different things like that. And there's stories written that I've read that I thought were very, very good where the main, main character of power, like that had political power, was a terrible person like he was a tyrant and he was he was a monster pretty much but he used that power for the greater good in a way that was actually legitimately interesting like um and this is this is gonna be a very quick thing uh he had people disappear like he actually would you know have his people make people he was a dictator pretty much no one had a right to vote nobody had any of these things but he didn't use his power for his own benefit he used his power for everyone's benefit and was self-aware enough to be able to differentiate what shouldn't happen and what should happen within the confines of the world. Like, he understood the world really well. So, one of the things he did was he would make people disappear, but he wouldn't kill them. He would, he would make them go somewhere where they would actually be useful. And he did kill a few people, but they were so inherently evil that they could not exist in the world. And th the people he talked to actually knew that too, as well. So one of them was you open a door and there's just spikes there pretty much. And one person opened them and there were spikes there and they closed there and they opened it again later and there was no spikes there. And then they were able to walk through. And then there was another one where a person was just like, I'm going to destroy the world and walked through the door and that was it. And <clears throat> you, you believe that they died from it. So <clears throat> there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of ideas on what a, a leader should be. It's like, should you go against your constituents? Should you go against what people want you to do because you, you believe you are right when they are wrong? And I believe that there is precedent for that. I mean, that's what the is what the American Revolution was all about is, you know, we, we believe that, you know, we're, we're being oppressed, we're not being treated fairly, so we're going to make our own government, and then there was, there was a war and all that other stuff. But there's also people that are completely nuts that believe they're being treated unfairly when they're not. So um, <clears throat> there is a very interesting dynamic there of if somebody believes they're right, there's nothing you can say that's going to stop them because they believe they're right, and everyone else is is bad and wrong and horrible uh, and needs to be fought. So if somebody's giving you criticism and you believe their criticism is wrong or unfair, but you respond in turn by being wrong and unfair, then you're wrong. You need to fix it. So criticism as a whole is a very complex issue. Uh, and I'm not explaining it as well as I should be, but it's very difficult to. It's difficult to explain any of these things, really. but. If somebody's insulting a concept, like maybe like, I, I don't like this kind of, of thing, and you take offense to it, it's like there's, uh, there's, the, 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 there's the spot the vegan on, the, um, on Tumblr or whatever. It's just trying to get a rise out of people. <clears throat> it's like, I really like meat. Like they'll just say that. And then the, somebody will insult them. It's like, haha, I found you. And that's not really good. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a way of indirectly insulting somebody. You're trying to do this, and you just keep doing it until you annoy somebody enough that they respond, and then you're like, aha, you're exactly the kind of person I thought you were. But that's not really fair. Um, you can say that all vegans are whatever, and you're not being fair. It's not fair criticism because you're generalizing. Generalizing is never good, which is funny because that's a generalization. Um, but... You have to be fair in your criticisms. You can't do it as a game to insult people. You can't do it for your own benefit. And you can't do it because it's fun. It's not something that's right. If somebody insults you, you, you can correct them. You can say, that's not true. Here's my proof. 
and be, you know, an adult about it. Or you can just punch him in the face, you know, knee him in wherever, and then laugh at their pain because that's how you respond to things. And I don't believe that's right. And there's a lot of people that do that, especially in politics. It's like, oh, you insulted me? Well, you know what? I'm going to dig up everything I can on you and destroy your entire existence, which has happened. And I don't, think that's, I don't think that's right, but I also don't necessarily believe that all of it is wrong because if you do have things that can destroy your career that you've been hiding that is illegal or something like that, then maybe it should be brought to light. And I believe that there is a lot of things that have been said in the, this current presidential election year that disqualifies pretty much everyone almost. Uh, that are just the illegal activity, scandals, like related to their jobs. Um, I, I recently found out that there's actually a lot of voting fraud that's going on, um, or that has been going on anyway. I don't know how many of them participated in it, but there's an investigation, I guess. I don't know, but there should be an investigation about it since they've admitted to it, so there should be. Anyway, um, those are critiques. So I, I believe that the FBI should be involved in a lot of this stuff, and I don't know if they are or not. So that's it, I guess. It's just corruption is not corruption. What the heck am I talking about? It's just criticism is, I, I was talking about this before, so sorry. Criticism is important for personal growth. Uh, it's necessary for understanding your own faults, but it has to be done fairly. You can't just start saying things to hurt somebody and expect them to be helped by it. Some people need different kinds of criticism. Like some people need it softer. Some people need it very, very blatant. It's like you are wrong if you're like if you're doing this. So there, there is different different ways of doing that. And I, I believe that's an important part of of life is understanding how you yourself need to be addressed for your your best behavior. Because uh, some people don't know. It's like oh, you need to be very in my face, and you say something, and they start crying, and they run away, and they never talk to you again. It's like, that's not that's not healthy. They, they think they need something that actually hurts them. Uh, that's bad. And some people think that you need to be very subtle about something when really you need to just flat out tell them. It's like, hey, stop doing that. But, 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 it's like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll stop doing that. It's like, uh, I, I leave things around sometimes. And my brother's like, you need to stop doing that. It's like, you know what? I do need to stop doing that. I didn't realize I was doing that. So, okay, so I picked it up and put it away. And I think that's important. Communication is important. And then when it's in the business world, it's even more important because people's lives depend on it. That's it. That's the video. I uh, hope it was entertaining or informative. I hope you liked it. And I hope to see you in the next video. And peace.